Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to Canterbury Cathedral this morning on this um, second Sunday of Easter, which is often known as Low Sunday. It's really good to have you here with us this morning, and especially to welcome those who are online with us as well from around the world. We're really grateful that the Guildford Chamber Choir, our visiting choir for today, and across this weekend, will be singing the service for us while our cathedral choir are on their Easter break. This evening, it is the eve of the Annunciation, and so we'll be having a very special, solemn even song, and then we will have a, an extra procession down into the chapel of Our Lady Undercroft into her holy house to celebrate her feast. And then tomorrow there are a number of Eucharists that you can attend, but particularly there's a sung Eucharist at half past five. So we do hope that you'll join us for that. Our preacher this morning is um, Reverend uh, Canon Andrew Dodd, who is our uh, Canon Treasurer and that's different from what is actually publicized, but we're really grateful that he stepped in at the last minute and will be preaching for us today. Those of you who enjoyed our Teze worship during Lent will be delighted to hear that Teze will be resuming on the 15th of April at 12.30 in the Undercroft, and you're all very welcome to come to that every Monday. If you'd like to be involved in the organizing of that service, then please, can you speak um, to our presenter, Wendy, after the service? And just to let you know that coffee today will be over in the lodge, so please make your way over there and see if you can make, old, make new friends and regain your acquaintances with old ones. You are all most welcome. So let's now just pause for a moment as we prepare ourselves for, for worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have, not lived, by our, we have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. It was evening on the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. 
Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible stories that we listen to in the Easter season are about how the disciples learn to live and be transformed by the resurrection of Jesus. Just as during Lent, the Bible stories that we heard about were about conflict as the disciples journeyed to Jerusalem and Jesus' death, now everything at the resurrection has suddenly changed. Jesus' resurrection opens up a radically new future. And the disciples have to understand and learn its significance and live as a transformed community. And the first thing they have to face is forgiveness. During his life, Jesus has spoken about forgiveness when the fragile relationships between the disciples were tested, when they were jockeying for positions of privilege and power amongst themselves. Peter, you might remember, came to Jesus and asked, how many times must I forgive? As many as seven times. 
Jesus responds directly, not seven times, I tell you, but 77 times. But it's in Jerusalem during the last hours of Jesus's life at his arrest and trial that their relationships are completely fractured. Judas, Peter, all the disciples abandon Jesus, their friend and their teacher, and leave him to his fate. Never was a group of people in greater need of forgiveness. A few weeks ago, I heard a series of radio broadcasts about forgiveness. It was called Stories from the Front Line in which people who have lived through truly appalling experiences describe how they have continued to live. One episode was the story of Marion Partington, whose younger sister Lucy disappeared in 1973. Twenty years later, it was discovered that Lucy had been a victim of serial killers Frederick and Rosemary West. Marion described how at the trial of Rosemary West, she made a determined commitment to recognize Rosemary West's humanity and not go down the easier and more predictable path of demonizing her. Forgiveness began for Marion with a murderous rage. But because of her determination, she could, in time, develop what she described as a forgiving heart. In time, she developed a genuine compassion for a person who was caught in a cage of suffering and trapped by the greed and hatred and ignorance of her impoverished soul. Over the years, it was Marion who forgave countless times, but it was in forgiving that she herself found liberation and freedom. Marion refused to be caught in the vicious circle where the sins of others that we cannot confront are in reality retained within us. And as a consequence, we find ourselves, we remain unchanged and we are unable to receive forgiveness ourselves. Ross Parker, in his book, Healing Wounded Histories, says this, the effects of unforgiveness linger on in the story of the individual and community to which they belong. Jesus said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Forgiveness is so important. Otherwise, unresolved conflict will continue to damage us and the relationships with those around us. Now that doesn't make it easy. Forgiveness is ongoing, costly work. It needs daily attention as Jesus shows us in the pattern of his own life. But it is essential because it's the only way we ourselves can find freedom and liberation. Marion Partington has had to wrestle with this day after day for years. She wrote a letter to Rosemary West, but she says she didn't send it for four years because she needed that time to make sure that she didn't expect a reply. She needed to be absolutely clear that her motivation to forgive came from within her. Marion's determination to resist being overcome by evil or fear or grief is a continuous intentional act of turning towards goodness because she is resolved to put something of beauty into the story of the West's terror. The disciples are gathered in fear behind locked doors. But it's here 
in their moment of grief that the risen Christ comes. He shares his peace. He shows them the marks of crucifixion, the consequence of his betrayal, his suffering and death. He breathes the Holy Spirit into them and he offers them both the challenge and the liberation of forgiveness. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The risen Christ transformed the frightened disciples. They were confronted with their own betrayal of Jesus and they were offered the possibility of change. For Peter, that freed him. It turned his denial that he even knew Jesus into a call to love. For Thomas, who mistrusted his friends and wouldn't even believe that they'd seen the risen Jesus, he was the first to acknowledge Jesus as my Lord and my God. But, I think, it's within the whole community's experience of the risen Christ that the most radical transformation happens. The early church that we read about in the Acts of the Apostles formed a community which no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything was held in common and there was not a needy person among them. The risen Christ forms a community that's shaped by radically different values of God's kingdom and turns a frightened, unforgiven group of individuals into a community of compassion and love where rank and privilege dissolve into a concern for the welfare of everyone. Of course, Jesus has taught these values throughout his ministry time and time again through parables and signs and miracles. But it is this moment that the whole of the gospel has been preparing for when a new future is opened up to the disciples centered on intimacy with Jesus and mission in the community. It's at this moment that the community of disciples is transformed through the risen Christ and they understand in a new way the words that Jesus had previously taught them in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Forgiveness is not without cost. The peace that Jesus brings requires us to face the reality of sin. And if the new community based on peace and truth and love is to be fulfilled, the full implications and significance of forgiveness need to be understood and owned in our hearts. Stephen Cherry, the Dean of King's College in Cambridge, in a recent article has written about the glib and sometimes even oppressive way that Christians have understood forgiveness. He mentions how the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse in the church identified how the understanding and practices of forgiveness have actually contributed to a culture where abuse was not properly addressed. He also talks about the South African Truth and Reconciliation Commission who put pressure to forgive on those who had experienced the gross violation of their human rights under apartheid. The commission, for example, praised those who forgave and dismissed or ignored those who refused. Forgiveness is a gift of God's spirit, which can only be received by a community which knows the sins from which it needs to be forgiven and is able to repent with truth and honesty and justice. As we continue our Easter journey, we know that there are many places of conflict and violence across our hurting world where forgiveness, truth and justice need to be addressed. 
we know that the suffering of places like Gaza and Israel, Ukraine and Russia, where forgiveness with justice will be part of a difficult path to peace. The forgiveness of the risen Christ calls us as a community to face issues of power and control, such as the injustices of racism, discrimination of all kinds, and poverty around the world and on our own doorstep. Addressing forgiveness starts in our own communities, the places we spend every day, with the people and colleagues who are closest to us, in our own homes, our churches, our places of work or education. We need to model a different way of being community, knowing that we are a people shaped by the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Jesus invites us to follow the daily and demanding path of forgiveness, refusing to collude with destructive cycles that merely perpetuate injustice and violence. And by seeking forgiveness for ourselves and others, transform us into the people called to live the, live and live the risen life of Christ. Amen. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Let us pray. Lord, as we celebrate the joy of the resurrection, help us to abide in the life of your Son this day. Draw more deeply into Christ, Justin, our Archbishop, and the whole Anglican Communion and especially today the province of Alexandria. Grant your peace to this Diocese of Canterbury and to Rose, Bishop of Dover, that we may have the wisdom and zeal to proclaim the good news of Christ to those with whom we share our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, Bring your strength and healing to those places in our world where there is war and conflict. Bless the people of the Holy Land, Ukraine, Sudan, and all who live in fear or want. Give special blessing to those who seek to give a home to those who are fleeing their land. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, grant that our communities may be places of flourishing and kindness. Bless all those who live in difficult circumstances and give perseverance and a sense of vocation to all those who support those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, grant your strength to all those who suffer and your healing to those who are sick, that they may know in difficult times the comfort of your presence. 
Lord, in your mercy. Lord, grant to those who have died a share in the risen life of your Son, that, freed from suffering, they may rejoice with him forever. Lord, in your mercy. In a moment of silence, let us offer our own prayers to the Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Alleluia. And also with you. Alleluia. And let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace with you, man.
creator of all. You wash away our sins and give us new birth by the Spirit and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate the resurrection, renew your gift of life within us. We ask this through the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memories of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As we join our prayers with the Church Universal, so we say, each in our own language, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.